Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin Andrea, aka Styles and Seams. I'm a sewist and a maker, and today I want to share with you a project that I did in a crazy, crazy marathon because I got to go to an actual event, thank goodness, during the time of coronavirus. It was my good friend Nick and Iman's wedding. They had a really great outdoors event and I wanted to make something that was fabulous to wear to it, celebrate the summer, celebrate uh, love, and just have something romantic and special to wear to that event. Oh, the sun's back up. invite in my hand and knowing that I wanted to make something spectacular to wear to this wedding um, I was so excited when Stores London reached out to me earlier in the summer and offered me my choice of their incredible fabrics to use for a project of my choice and I ended up choosing this gorgeous hot pink light pink orange and cyan blue fabric called Rupus that is this incredibly soft smooth cotton lawn so it's super super lightweight and it's just perfect for a summer dress something with gathers something that is going to be big and and floaty and immediately this Jacquemus dress popped into my head um, I had saved it to my Pinterest board for spring 2020 months ago and I knew that I wanted to like make an attempt at recreating it and because this fabric is so lightweight it was perfect to do do that much fabric and and make the dress happen but I did make some modifications so first big modification that I did is really to change it from being a maxi length dress to being more of like a midi crop t length for me I tend not to like maxi length dresses because I am so tall it just ends up being like a monstrous amount of fabric but then also because I like to maneuver around go up and down stairs and I always think that like a super long dress is just a tripping hazard so that was my change number one the other two changes unfortunately came due to lack of time to actually execute the dress. I went from having the buttons down the front doing the rouleau with the really nice covered buttons I was going to do to just seaming it down the front. And honestly, I don't think there's that much loss because I don't really anticipate wearing my dress over pants. The other big change that I did to the dress is to go from having more or less an exposed triangle shaped top along the bust to using a McCall's pattern M7937 that I've used a few times to create a bust that did still have some cleavage, did still have some like skin showing, but I could wear a bra with it, which I thought was just so important going into a church. I didn't want to potentially have a wardrobe malfunction in somebody's church at somebody's wedding or on the dance floor later on that evening. So those are my two big changes from my inspiration dress, some because of time, some just because of like practicality. However, I did actually draft the original dress and didn't get to using it. Just take a pause and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and go ahead and hit the like button. It means so much to the growth of my channel. It means so much to me. Thanks. So if you'd like to learn everything about this dress, please go to my blog and I will have very, very detailed notes there on some of the changes and the inspiration that I had and ultimately like what I executed in the long run. But I wanted to focus on two very important elements of this dress. The first is how do you get the most bang for your buck in terms of fabric yardage? I was able to create this dress on my six foot two tall frame and have it be huge and flowing and beautiful with only four meters of fabric because of some quick math so I will share that with you. The second that I wanted to share with you is my top tips on getting this constructed so that it's beautifully finished inside and out but doing so as quickly and efficiently as possible. So I'll walk you through the pressing feet and the techniques that I use in order to recreate to create this dress because 
The skirt is something you can totally draft for yourself and you can totally recreate this for yourself. Let's get started. So let's talk about the design element that was absolutely crucial for maintaining in my dress. And that is the super, super wide tiered skirt. Now, this skirt is big and I actually made it to be a full circle skirt and then a little bit some. I noticed, however, there aren't a lot of good calculators or formulas or resources on the internet in order to figure out how to calculate exactly what width I would need in order to not do a circle skirt, but to do a tiered skirt that's as big as a circle skirt. I did find a couple of things here and there, but they overall weren't that helpful to me because they weren't going to give me the shape that I wanted. So I had to go and do the math. That's after I tried to create a circle skirt and was like, this ain't gonna work because it's gonna take too much fabric. I took a step back and I was like, okay, we can do tiers as long as the gathers aren't too, too much where it just looks like it's bunched up in a lot of places. And as long as I can actually fit it on the four meters of fabric that I had. So I managed to do some quick math. I had to balance out exactly how wide those gathers were going to be. And I had to balance out how much I can make it like a circle skirt. And it resulted in a lot of numbers and a lot of math. And so instead of teaching you how to do all of those calculations, I created a resource for you that you can just use my spreadsheet, use my calculator, put in your field and be able to create your perfect tiered circle skirt. Okay, a quick pop in to say I am pro gathers, but I am not really pro gathers anywhere near my waist. Why? Well, your girl wants to look snatched and gathers at the waist just add all of that extra fabric and thickness in a spot that isn't super smooth and isn't super flattering. So rather than having this actually be a tiered skirt that's gathered on every single tier, I decided to create the first level more as a circle skirt, which you would recognize same from like a peplum. So this dress has the bodice that goes into the circle and then the tiers start a little bit lower once it's already more full. So you still get that A line and that full like half circle opening up or full circle actually but you don't have so much bulk at the waistline, which is an amazing solution, am I right? So I don't want you to get too overwhelmed by this spreadsheet. If you're not great at the maths, don't worry, I have done the math for you. All you need to know are a few things. At the top of the spreadsheet, there are a few green cells. In those green cells, I want you to change those values to be your values. So for example, the waist measurement that I have there is 32 inches, which is actually my under bust because that's where I wanted it to fit. Take that and put your measurement there. This spreadsheet is agnostic to imperial or metric. Don't worry about that. As long as you're consistent in using the same unit of measurement, it will also be consistent in using the same unit of measurement. It's the way the math works. Next, after you've inputted those values up there in the green, go down to the section in the long, wider spreadsheet, and there's a couple of different things in the blue, which represents the different tiers. In those different boxes for the different tiers, just put in the length that you want for each of your tiers. Now, taking a step back, I decided to do four tiers for my dress, which means that I have the bodice portion and then I have a portion around my waist, I have a portion around my hips, a portion around knee level, and then a portion that goes down to my calves. I did, however, include in this calculator a fifth possible tier in case you wanted to do five tiers and make yourself a maxi dress. Figured I'd do the math for you there as well. If you are like me and super, super tall, this is gonna be very helpful for you because you won't have to go and adding length to weird places and buying extra fabric you don't need because you don't have no idea how much you need to use. So, done the math for you there. <laughs> But the key here for the tiers, I've chosen to use um, sort of graduated tiers. I start with the shortest one up by my waist and I just add two inches going down the line until I get to about 11 inches. 
And then I actually figured out that I didn't have enough fabric to do a 13 inch tier for my fourth tier. So I changed that number to 11 and I was able to get it all on four meters of fabric. And so I think that's what's so great about this calculator that I've created. As long as you are able to keep adjusting those numbers in those blue tiers and make a couple of other adjustments, like for example, the overall length of your skirt, then you can make this fit on your fabric. If you follow the box that is in the bottom right, that says the actual fabric yardage that you need. So if you already have your fabric like I had and you only have four meters, play around with the numbers and get to a good comfortable place where you can have the biggest possible skirt that you can have with the amount of fabric that you already have. Pause, is this super confusing? Are you confused? Just uh, leave me a comment below and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. Um, I'd be happy to get back to you with more information. So just let me know and I'll help to answer your questions for you. Okay, now that you've figured out your pattern pieces and you're following along with my instructions on my blog to know how to sew this all together, one thing that I want to suggest for you is to use French seams, especially if you're using a very lightweight fabric like I did, a cotton lawn. The French seams are going to give you a very, very, very clean finish on the inside. It's going to stop any fraying and just make it so that the dress is as beautiful inside as it is out. If you did want to do a button placket on your dress like the Jock Mousse dress, this is gonna be really important because with the button placket, your dress is going to like fly open and you don't want like a ton of tiers of gathers and different like seam lines to be showing with some ugly frayed edges or overlocking. So use the French seams and here are the steps to do that on your fabric and then also to be able to do the French seams on the gathers as well, which is totally possible if you're using a lightweight fabric. I use the French seams practically everywhere with this dress, including attaching the bodice to the skirt here, doing the center front seam, which I added last minute because I couldn't do the button placket, and then each of the gathered tiers are finished with French seams also, including this first tier, which is attached to the circle skirt and to the following tier. As I prepare to sew a French seam on this fabric, the first thing that I'm going to do is take my fabric and place it wrong sides together. So that means that the, the nice side of the fabric is facing outward. And I'm gonna be sewing along this edge and I don't need very many pins because it's gonna hold pretty straight, but I'm gonna put just a few pins in here to make sure that there's no shifting and keep it going well. The next thing that I'm going to do is change out the presser foot. Right now I have the sort of universal presser foot on here, but I'm going to take that off, um, store it for safekeeping, and I'm going to be using this quarter inch quilting foot. It has this broad side that gives me a quarter inch that will be perfect, and I can sew very quickly without having to worry about where my fabric is relative to the seam gauge. So I'm just gonna pop that in really easily. And there we go, I'm ready to sew. So first thing that you wanna do when you're sewing the French seam and you're sewing for the fabric, I'm going to make sure that I tack it at the beginning or back stitch. My machine here has a automatic tacking and cutting function, so I can do that straight on the machine. The second thing that I'm going to do, because I'm working with such a thin fabric, I'm going to drop it down from the 2.5 stitch length down to a 2.0 stitch length, which I find works a little bit better on this fabric. So that's all set up and we're ready to take the first stitches. I'm going to drop my needle down. I'm ready to stitch. So now I have a quarter inch seam allowance here and it's finished on both edges with a tacking at the ends. I'm going to take this and trim down this seam allowance pretty, pretty close, about an eighth of an inch or so. Now I've got it over by my iron, which is set for cotton settings. And again, I have stitched wrong sides together. So what I'm going to do is open this up and I like to press it to one side give it a little bit of a seam and then I can fold that into itself 
And the key is that you want to make sure that you're keeping that seam very much in the middle and give it another press. Back at the sewing machine, you can see that I have it pressed here and now wrong sides are together. So when I stitch this, it's going to be just like if I were doing a normal stitch and I started with right sides together. So um, right sides are inside and tucked away. And what I'm going to be doing is taking this exposed seam right here and then sewing it into the seam line. So I wanna make sure that this is trimmed short enough that when I fold this over and I use the quarter inch stitch, nothing is gonna stick out. And the way to ensure that I do that quickly and I don't have to pin this at all and make it fussy is again using this quarter inch quilting foot and I'm just gonna drop it down and do the exact same thing I did before with tacking at both ends and stitching it. So this is the finished result. You can see here that on what is now the inside of my dress, which is the wrong side of the fabric, you can see the clear stitching line and it's nice and straight. I use that quarter inch stitch. And then on the right side of the fabric, you can see that it's tucked in and you can't actually see any of the raw edges peeking out from anywhere. So again, it's a very, very clean way to finish it and it's perfect. The last step for this is to take it over to my sewing machine. And what I'm just gonna do is open it out. I'm gonna press the wrong side side the seam allowance to one side and then on the right side I'm just going to make sure that it's got a nice even press I'm going to do that off camera now it's time to sew the gather so just like with the French seam I'm going to take advantage of using this quarter inch quilting foot to make it go a little bit easier for me and then I'm going to switch and use a different foot in a second and this will help it just stay consistent so I'm just popping this on and you want to make sure that you change your stitch length so that it is as long as possible because again these are gathering stitches so i'm going to do two rows of these stitches um, the first row i'm doing with this quarter inch foot so i'm just going to press it down and i'm going to let this just give me the guide for how far to do it so don't back stitch or anything just lift your needle and clip the threads and you have your first row of basting stitches. Now, I want this next row to be only a quarter inch away from here. So what I'm gonna do is actually just take this off and switch it to an edge stitching foot, which is this one right here. I'm gonna pop that on and this is actually going to allow me to just follow my first row of stitching a little bit more closely. Again, I'm gonna put it down so that the edge of this edge stitch foot is just along my first stitching line and I'm gonna switch my machine needle position so that it's on the left side, which for me is number one. I think for most machines it's either zero or one. So again, no back stitching, longest stitch length. Make sure you readjust if you switch the stitch. So there's my second row of stitches. I'm just going to pull that out and this is what we have. Now that I have these two stitches, I'm just going to choose one of these stitches to from the back side rather. I'm going to choose both of them from the back side, but not pull the ones from the front side. Just separate those out as good as you can. And I'm going to hold these tightly in my hand while I pull on this fabric to create my gathers. Make sure you can see that. Now I have the piece that I'm gathering and then I have a little piece that I'm going to be attaching it to. And again, this is just a small sample with some of my scraps, but in reality, you would be attaching this wider piece that's being gathered to the smaller piece, which is actually the tier that's one higher than your gathering. So if I'm working on gathering my fourth tier, it means that I would be attaching this to my third tier of the dress from top to bottom. Again, I want to be able to do this on a French seam. So what I'm going to do is the same as before when we did the French seams. I'm going to be attaching this wrong sides together and I'm going to be making sure that I've actually have it lined up so that from top to bottom vertically these are going in the same direction and I haven't like switched my print around and made a big mistake that way. So what I'm just going to do is continue to adjust this down and get it so that it fits to the size here. When you're actually working with your skirt, what you might want to be mindful of is any notches. What I like to do is create a notch in the midway point 
of each of my pieces and that way as I'm matching the midway point of this piece to the midway point of this piece it makes it a little bit easier for me to have the gathers be even all the way across and I don't end up with a bunch of bunched up pieces here and then like no gathers on the other side. Okay, now I've got my gathers pinned to the fabric piece. And again, I've gone ahead and done wrong sides together because this is gonna be my first stitch before I go and do the French seam. So I'm just gonna take this to the sewing machine and stitch right through those gathers. I'm using my regular presser foot here, but you could use the quarter inch foot if you wanted to. And now I am going to be tacking on both ends or back stitching on both ends. So let's just start that off and just go straight down the line. Make sure that your ruffles don't like come off and like go in the wrong direction. Okay, same as with our French seams, I'm gonna come in with my scissors and I'm going to trim this down to about an eighth of an inch. That sounds awful. And I would urge you to use caution here because especially if you are doing this into the round, if you're going from the tiered skirt into the circle skirt, you could very, very easily cut into the fabric and you don't want that to happen. So I've cut that off now. I'm gonna take it over to my iron and same as with the French seam, I'm going to press it to one direction and then press it inward so that I can get the right sides together. Okay, final stitch. I've got this pressed, and you can see a little bit of my gathering stitches in some places because I was being messy. But remember, this is actually the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. And what we're gonna be doing is encasing this seam right here so that you don't see any raw edges. I've trimmed this down to about an eighth of an inch, which means that I can use my quarter inch foot again to just help me stay consistent as I'm stitching. And it just makes it a lot easier so that I can do it a little bit more mindlessly as opposed to like having to watch it like like a cake or something <laughs> so again uh, you want to back stitch at the beginning here tie it down and now again this is going to be the wrong side of the fabric so if you were using a matching stitch it wouldn't be that messy you would just see this and on either side so it looks like that on the inside of your dress, which is amazing. And then on the right side of your dress, this is what you have. So it's beautiful and I have it closed in there. So that's it for sewing French seams into gathers. I will mention that using this particular method is really, really great with lightweight fabrics. I'm using, again, a cotton lawn here, which is very thin and lightweight, but you could also use this for any type of sheer fabric, a rayon chalet, anything that's pretty lightweight and isn't gonna have too much thickness that would just end up encased in this seam and create a lot of bulkiness. This dress is just as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. You can see everything is finished with French seams, so there's no fraying and there's no nastiness on the inside. There's one more tool that I wanna tell you about and it is the rolled hem foot. If you peeped on the spreadsheet, the last tier of my dress has nearly 200 inches of hemline. That is a lot to press and fold under and then press again and go about hemming. So I was able to skip a lot of that pressing and speed up my hemming process by using this rolled hem foot. The rolled hem foot is pretty easy to use. You just have to get it a little bit started with an initial little press and fold of about two inches and then position your fabric so that it is inside of the foot. Once you get it going, make sure that you're pulling the fabric to keep it at the same angle as is on the foot and it will go happy sailing as you work your way around the dress. One thing that I did find though, my machine or rather my rolled hem foot had a hard time of sewing consistently through any of the French seams that I had on the lowest tier. So if that happens to you, you may have to take your fabric out of the rolled hem foot, pull it aside, and then start over again once you're past that French seam, and then go and just do a regular stitch over the little bit that it missed. 
that is a little bit annoying, but it, you still will have saved yourself potentially like an hour of time by using the rolled hem foot on this super large hem. Those are my tips for recreating this awesome dress. I taught you how to calculate a tiered skirt for your height using fabric as efficiently as possible and showed off some special tools to help you so much, much faster. I do believe that you'd totally be able to execute this dress. I highly recommend using a beautiful cotton lawn fabric to make it. It's so lightweight. It keeps all of the tiers and all of the meters of fabric that you're putting into this dress from weighing it down too much. And again, it's cotton, so it's breathable and a bit more sustainable than the plastic versions out there. Thanks again for being here with me and watching this video. If you like this, again, please subscribe, help keep my channel growing. Please like this video, comment below. Let me know um, if you use any of these techniques before, if you learned anything particular today. I would love to see if you recreate this dress, so please hit me up on Instagram, at Styles and Seams, and tag me in your photos if you go ahead and make a dress like this. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you back here soon. Thanks, bye.